action figure fans, it's the one and only Optiponymous coming to you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to the incredible support of my patron Adam, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Scrapper. Another step to finally completing Devastator, which means now we are only one away from that. For the package, much like all the Studio Series figures, you do have that nice open window that fully showcases the figure with the cool CGI image of him right there. Of course, you got the Transformer text with the Generation logo. And of course, this is uh, how Scrapper appears in the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen film. Come around to the side, you got an up-close image of his ugly face. The other side here is a kind of up-close image of Devastator's ugly face. Come around to the back of the package, you can see that he transforms in 36 steps. And you got an image of him in his robot mode as well as his vehicle mode. And of course it says that the Desert Sands Quake as Constructicon Scrapper combines with his comrades to form Constructicon Devastator. But uh, for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. All right guys, so here we have Scrapper opened up out of his packaging and obviously in his vehicle mode, which I don't know anything about construction vehicles, but I think this is called the front loader. Either way, it's a really cool looking vehicle. And honestly, when you look at it, uh, it looks like a heavy construction sort of vehicle. I mean, when you look at it, it really doesn't scream uh, a robot inside there, which is really very well done. The only part that gets a little bit ugly, and all of them have an aspect in vehicle mode that's a little bit ugly, I guess would be this front section. I wish there was a way they could have made this kind of more closed off, I guess. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, but like I said, all of them have an aspect that kind of, sort of, doesn't really look like a vehicle. I mean, if you were to see this on the side of the street, you'd be what the hell's wrong with that? How's that supposed to scoop anything? But it is what it is. But yeah, a uh, really very cool looking vehicle. You can see it's primarily done in this yellow plastic. Some really nice gunmetal gray throughout there, though. Kind of picking up some extra highlights and some details. Got some uh, metallic blue for the windows. Really nice uh, detail here for the tires. You got two here. You got a fake one here. Uh, you can see that this, this guy rolls really well, too. I mean, you just put him there and oh, there he goes. That's because my table is a little bit slanted, apparently. But, I mean, that guy really does roll well. I mean, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, the back tires or the inside tires don't do anything. Those are kind of faux tires, but they look good. The only way that you can really tell that they're not tires is when you look in the bottom. Which, and, you know, how many times are you going to have, like, oh, look, that... What's wrong with the tires on it? What what What's wrong with the whole thing being upside down? Why are you worried about the tires? But he's, he's a cool looking toy, really, really is. Uh, it does have a functional front section here. You can kind of get the, the rest of it to, to, to flex uh, if you detach a whole bunch of stuff. So really the, the main sort of articulation point uh, in this mode is gonna be right here, which that's fine. Hey, hey, let's see, no, you can't really, no, it doesn't go back any further. I was gonna say, hey, you could kind of make him look like his G1 leg self, but you really can't get it up all that high. So it's a leg that is flexing his toe, I guess. But yeah, really very, very nice. Now for some comparisons. Let's bring some of these guys in here. I only did a couple of them because there's a shit ton of these now. Uh, but you can see, uh, well, the reason I, I did these ones is because this is going to be the uh, the body that he attaches to, and then these make up his other arm. So you're going to kind of see his upper torso when I kind of put all these together. But scale-wise, I feel like it works pretty decently still. Uh, I'm going to put him like that. That's probably not going to matter. But uh, obviously, this is a leader class figure, so he's considerably bigger. These ones are the deluxes. But uh, again, what's interesting, and we've known this for a while, is that these two make up one arm, whereas he makes up the other arm. So it's definitely interesting to see the size difference here with them. And I just realized that I didn't bring out any Voyager figures. But hey, uh, Voyager Optimus Prime. So... Ta-da! Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, definitely a good size, I think. Now, for the transformation into his limb mode, first what you're going to want to do is kind of lift this up and separate these pieces. Uh, just kind of pull that away and then rotate these around 
just like that. The, the transformation on this is really very, very simple. Fold these bits out just like that and then collapse this piece down. Now you have kind of his hands. I guess you could angle this around to do whatever you really kind of want with that. And then come around here to the back bit. You want to detach this and now you on the inside here, let me see if I can show this. Uh, you have this little post that in vehicle mode slots in right there. You want to take this and kind of angle this down a little bit and now you can see a little slot on the inside tire that's going to peg in right below that bit right there. So just bring that around and squeeze that in there. I get it lined up proper. There we go. So again, kind of just flex these bits out just a little. So again, detach that. Then bring that down and you're going to bring that in just like so. And there's his arm. Um, like I said, uh, he, there's not a lot to it. it it's fairly simple uh, for the most part, but accurately depicts, I, I, I guess, how, how his arm looked in the film. So let's set him here and let's do some uh, combining, shall we? All right, uh, here we have uh, kind of the upper torso. I'm not going to do the entire thing right now. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Uh, but here we have Scrapper, and much like these guys over here that have that nice attachment point, uh, he's got one here as well. So you just slide that right in there. Ugh. Again, much like the other ones, very secure. Um, although when you rotate, I wonder if I have that in the right way. Maybe it's supposed to go like that. Uh, let's see, maybe, maybe, nah, I guess it doesn't really matter because you can rotate that, so, uh, personal preference, I suppose, but it does tend to end up popping, uh, these bits out, let's, uh, get that back in, well, that's fine for right now, but you can see what's going on, uh, big, giant robot man, uh, absolutely loving the way that this is coming together. Uh, it's going to require some finesse uh, in, t in terms of uh, posing him, uh, putting him in a uh, cool pose or something of that nature. Uh, but one thing that I will say is that everything attaches very securely. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know necessarily if that's the right spot. So let me get this out of here. Uh, I, I'm really quite impressed with the the overall stability of every piece that kind of comes together and forms him. Uh, so while he may be a little bit uh, loose, kind of. I mean, everything is securely attached on here. All the different almost like mushroom pegs where they lock in. It's a very sturdy connection, but you can see just how big this guy gets for an arm. Uh, he's a, a little bit bigger because he's made up by two deluxe figures, but I mean, in general, they're about the same size, which is quite impressive. Don't really know how excited I am about uh, doing the review for him because that's going to be massive, but it'll be fun. Now, for uh, the transformation for this guy into his robot mode, first uh, I'm going to just kind of get these little bits out because they're already loose and kind of flopping all over the place. Come up here to this uh, top section, kind of lift this and separate that. Then you got these arms here. Bring these up. You can split these right down here. You got two different pieces. You got this lower section here and then this upper section. When you get this lifted up, kind of twist this out. That will release this little tab from that section. So you kind of have to rotate it out to get the clearance to be able to bring all of this out just like so and kind of stretch that all the way out because you're going to need to tab everything uh, together. So get that spread out like that. Bring these down like so. Now these legs do some really funky things. Uh, make sure that you push this in and then you bring this leg bit down. I always, I, I have yet to get this 
right, <laughs> which I apologize. I know you guys watch my videos so that I can show you how to transform this stuff. So you're gonna bring that through like that. You basically need to get this tab on the back section because it's gonna lock in there. So bring that in and lock that there like that. Then take this, this is gonna fold up and then bring this down, that locks into place there. So again, if that went too fast, I'm sorry. So let's try this uh, again. Let me get this oriented right. You wanna bring this in, this is going to bend and then you fold this piece to the side like so. Then rotate it around, bring it back and lock it into the back of the wheel. Then straighten all this out, bring this piece up and then bring this in locking that down now uh, you got some bend points right there you can uh, bend him how you want but uh, he does a really good job of standing there those feet are massive take this entire back section rotate this back like so get this piece out of the way rotate that back and then you want to rotate this along the side there I mean I guess it really doesn't matter where you put that it's it's personal preference I, I suppose uh, I mean if you wanted to keep it hidden I mean, you could probably just take it there and put it there. Um, I mean, everything's still pretty much, oh no, that kind of lifts things up a little bit. So maybe you do want to keep it out a little bit so that these little pieces here can attach. So then push that in, push that in, bring this up. You got these little posts right here that are gonna lock in on the side of his butt. Oh, you know what? And then actually, no, you do want to leave this up because this won't go all the way up then. So extend that up all the way there we go and then see all right now yeah, see i'm learning something should have known that before sorry open this this piece here is really tough to get out it locks on this little giant well i shouldn't say little and then giant but that bar right there bring that up like so these arms rotate these around play with these a little bit Kind of angle that all around. Keep that there. Straighten that. Straighten his legs. And just kind of fiddle with them. And there you have Scrapper in his really awesome looking robot mode. And I gotta say, uh, this might be my favorite Constructicon. I just love the way he looks. Actually, I think it's uh, supposed to be like that. that that's a... Uh, that's how it's supposed to be. But I mean, this guy really does look terrific. In terms of the color scheme, obviously it's primarily going to be the same, but I don't know, just the overall proportions and bulk of him really is uh, absolutely fantastic. Head sculpt wise, you can see he's uh, ugly um, as most of these uh, characters in Revenge of the Well, just the movie characters are. I mean, he is a ugly, looking kind of bug looking sort of creature a gorgeous paint detail on the inside there rest of the body again has a tremendous amount of detail sculpted throughout the entire thing you look at all this and it just looks like he's got oh, put put that little piece down uh like a motor in there i mean absolutely gorgeous hands uh you know i mean these are his hands it, it, it is what it is i mean at least they're articulated you can kind of move them around and you can kind of pinch that, I, I, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, that is what it is. This one, I do kind of wish that these could open. Uh, these are locked in place as it is. It just is like a, a giant ball uh, of sorts. So, that's that. Uh, the legs look great. I mean, overall, he's a great looking figure. He, he really, really is. So, let's do some comparisons. I know I didn't bring in uh, a couple guys, so let's bring them in now uh, and i'll show you how everybody looks in uh the robot mode so we got a uh, mix master there here we have a long haul bring him in i got to get a collection of the voyagers up inside here and then we have this guy no, I, I am not we're gonna get a skipjack eventually um so that's going to technically complete him because leg wise skipjack is the color um that you should be so uh, scale, scale wise there you have it here's a here's a deluxe figure here's bumblebee yeah there we go so you can see he scales very nicely 
with the rest of them. Uh, first articulation, the head goes left and right. It does kind of rotate as well. Uh, you got a little hinge right here as part of the transformation, so you can kind of get them looking down and everything. A decent range of motion. It, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the shoulders here do get a little bit tricky because you got these pieces here. So you have to make sure it stays outward and then you rotate it. Uh, otherwise, that's... Well, that totally just looked like he was picking at his butt. Um, but that does get a little bit cumbersome there. It's not terrible, I guess. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Rotates at the upper part of the elbow. He technically has two elbow joints. Um, you can see you got one right here. There we go. And then you have another one right down there. So good range of motion there. Uh, that doesn't rotate or anything. That's all locked into place. This one here, same amount. You got the rotation there. That hinges. That pinches. Uh, nothing at the waist, but I do actually like how they articulated uh, some hip joints in there. That's pretty cool. So you get the little wiggle. You get some bending outward. Moves forward and back. Uh, you got the rotation at the upper part of the thigh. You got to bend here at the knee. You don't get a huge range of motion because this little piece right here kind of locks things into place. But articulation is pretty solid on him. In general, really happy with them. Um, the detail, like I said, is all really well done. Doesn't come with any accessories, so that does kind of suck, but I don't know what you could really give him. He just really has a cool, cool look. Um, yeah, no ankle articulation or anything. So the articulation is average uh, for what most of these figures kind of have, but I'm happy with him. Uh, I, I, like I said, he might be my favorite favorite of all the constructor cons I, I just think he is that damn cool i'm, I'm really really happy with him now to transform him back uh first we're going to come around here get these arms out of the way uh, you got to pull this chest piece away it, there's not a lot of space in there you kind of have to get your finger uh in between some of these grooves on the side to pull it forward and then just take the head and push that down you got to give it a good solid push for you to hear it lock in and then take this entire bit right here and then just bring it back up like so. You can come down here to the legs. The legs are probably the trickiest part just in knowing where everything kind of flips and folds and kind of rotates around because it does some really cool stuff. I mean, look at that sculpted in detail. You got like sculpted in wires and hoses and stuff. It's amazing. Fold this piece down like that and then take this, bend that in. You want to then take the foot and Fold that behind there. Uh, now straighten that out. Everything's gonna come together here in a minute. So again, do that on this side. Just take this, separate the bottom section from the toe, fold that up, get that kind of out of the way. There we go. And take this, fold this around and then straighten that out just like that. We'll, we'll play with all this here in a bit and uh, get everything uh, more appropriately lined up here in a few minutes, but uh, that's kind of what you want the, the legs to do. Come around here, I guess I could have left this. Come around here, pull this away, then take this and fold this up. Oh, sorry, pull this away like so, and then fold this bit up. Uh, I guess at this point you can leave that like that, doesn't really matter, I don't think. Fold that down. Um, you can orient the little combiner port however you want to. Sometimes it looks good one way, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, like I said, personal preference. So now we're going to bring these around. You're going to want the uh, elbow to be bending down. So keep it like that and then bring that in. And then, again, keep the elbow pointing down. You want to bring this piece up and bring these kind of on the inside. Now, like I said, you kind of have to swivel this in on the side here. You got that tab that's gonna slot in there. So kind of come in on an angle and then rotate it, getting that out of the way until that locks down into place. Uh, this piece does kind of get in the way and it's a little bit annoying, uh, but you kind of just push it on the side, straighten that, and then get that straight. And then bring this in and that will tab down right there. Now this, yeah, let's see, rotate these around. Probably have this the wrong way. Yeah, no, that, that's gonna, you're gonna have to do some rotation there in a second, but you'll see. So now we're gonna bring this up. This is going to rotate around and then separate this back. Now this here, you kinda wanna have it bend 
a little bit at this elbow and get that out of the way. You're going to get a little tab piece right there that's going to lock in on this. It's uh, because it moves around, uh, it, it actually is a little bit tricky to do. Uh, make sure you connect the two halves, I'm sorry. So just kind of give that a good squeeze. Um, but you really want to make sure that this stays on an angle uh, to get it to line up properly. So give that a good squeeze like that and that should properly kind of orient things. Now this, you're going to want to rotate this all the way around and then that's going to swivel out like that. Kind of separate these a little bit, get that all the way down and you can see basically what's happening here. So again, let me make sure I have that properly configured. So now you're gonna bend this in and you're gonna fit that right inside that little groove area. You're gonna take that little tab, like I said, and you're gonna lock it in to that portion right there. And then this is gonna come up and you have on the bottom, this that slots in right there. There we are, now let's do that on this side as well. So we're going to rotate this around and that will fit inside here. Let's open that. And that fits this arm thing underneath all this. So it's it's a little bit tricky uh, to do. It, it's not difficult by any stretch of imagination. You just kind of have to remember how everything goes. And then bring this, tab that in, that kind of detached, tab that in as well. Swivel this around, bring this up. Once you have one lined up, it's a little bit easier to get the other one lined up without dislodging everything. So give that a good squeeze. Straighten that, straighten that, and that's it. When you're done, there you have Scrapper back in his vehicle mode. And again, I'll be honest, I really do think that this is my favorite Constructicon. Vehicle mode wise looks pretty damn good. The only part that I wish was a little bit cleaner would be this. It definitely catches the eye as, wait a minute, there's something not right with that and it doesn't really disguise him all that much. The rest, I mean, it doesn't really look like there's much robot stuff anywhere. I guess you can rotate that, makes it a little, uh, better looking there and yeah, something like that so i mean i'm really happy with it uh the 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 bit here moves up and down i mean it's fairly functional as a good toy i mean it rolls very nicely in general very impressive transformation is also really fun to do it is simple but there's a lot of moving stuff with it and i love what they did with the legs the transformation for that is absolutely fun and results in a robot mold that is gorgeous the proportions of them look great i mean yeah he's got two different kind of hands but i mean at least it's articulated i mean in general there's just not really much that i can say that's bad about him i mean other than that it, really it's a home run and for me to try to find something wrong with him it really is just trying to find something which to me is more of a nitpick than anything else everything else uh, is kind of pointless to complain about because a lot of the stuff on here is just that damn good. So without doubt, I would recommend picking this guy up. If you're already invested in Devastator, this is a must have, but I think that in general, he's a worthy addition. And again, another one of those figures that almost makes me want to get two of each to be able to have a display with the Constructicons and then of course, just Devastator. I highly recommend this guy. So, all that being said, if Scrapper here is a figure that you would like to add to your collection, he will be hitting various retail locations fairly soon. So, if you're looking for him, good luck and happy hunting. Or, as always, you can go the easy way and avoid the coronavirus entirely by using places online like Big Bad Toy Store and Amazon. For that, I'll put links right down in the video description where you can go to those places and check out availability on this guy as well as the rest of the wide range of Transformer figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. Remember, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would do one very small thing for me. And that's simply just to hit that thumbs up button. That one very small gesture really does go a long way towards helping me out, and I would really appreciate it. Again, I want to send a huge shout out to my patron, Adam, who through his direct support has made this review possible. And if you'd like information on how you can become a patron and help support my channel like Adam, Feel free to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash optobotomus. And finally, remember, the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.